So, why haven't people built a colony on the moon yet? It's likely because they don't have enough building supplies. There are no hardware stores there. The only way out would be to deliver materials from Earth. Then, rockets would act as construction trucks. For comparison, imagine you want to build a house and use FedEx delivery to get all the necessary stuff. It would be extremely expensive and rather foolish. Using rockets would be the same. A colony on Mars sounds even more unrealistic right now. The distance from Earth to the Moon is about 239,000 miles. Well, it's at least 34 million miles between our planet and Mars. But asteroids are another story. They're rocky objects orbiting the Sun like planets, but they're much, much smaller, from 30 feet to 300 miles across. If you combine the mass of all asteroids in the solar system, it would still be less than that of the Moon. Those asteroids that do approach Earth carry trillions of dollars worth of metals and minerals, and some of them come so close that experts believe asteroid mining missions can become a reality in the near future. Your eyes shining, you switch off the TV. After getting to know such cool stuff, you find it hard to fall asleep. When you finally manage to catch some Zs, you dream of floating in endless space. You wake up with a start, feeling disoriented. Your body feels weird. You don't have enough oxygen to breathe. You open your eyes and look around. You're inside a sleeping capsule. Its walls are covered with tons of different buttons and tiny screens. After you experiment for a while, one of the sliding panels sweeps to the side. You crawl out of the pod. The absence of windows and any natural light makes you think you're underground. Dozens of sleeping capsules line the walls. The door leading out of the room is made of metal and looks heavy and unmovable. But once you press the button on the wall next to it, the door soundlessly opens. After climbing up a dark corridor for a while, you find yourself in a smaller room. Your heart sinks. There are at least half a dozen bulky spacesuits inside. What does it mean? Are you in space? Hey, good guess! You try to open the only other door in the room, which looks even sturdier than the previous one. But it just wouldn't budge. You sigh and start to pull on one of the spacesuits. As soon as you're securely packed inside, the door automatically unlocks. After waiting for a while in an airlock chamber, you finally make a step outside and the breath catches in your throat. As you look up, you see a beautiful blue orb. It seems to be glowing. Startled, you realize it's Earth and you're quite close to it. Are you standing on the moon's surface? Unlikely. This space body is way smaller, and its surface doesn't look like the surface of our planet's natural satellite. It has an irregular shape and is heavily cratered and pitted. Over your head, several miles above the surface, you spot a sizable boulder. Then, an asteroid. If so, then the rock suspended in the air is a companion moon. Judging from how close our planet is, it must be a near-Earth asteroid or maybe even an Earth-crosser. Those are asteroids that cross our planet's orbit. Astronomers know about more than 10,000 of such space bodies. Almost 1,500 of them can be considered potentially hazardous to Earth. You feel proud of yourself for remembering so much info from yesterday's show. Suddenly, you realize that your spacesuit isn't attached to anything. And still, you aren't floating over the surface or slowly drifting away into open space. The asteroid must have artificial gravity. Otherwise, its own gravity would be too weak to prevent you from flying away. Hmm, come to think of it, creating a gravitational field makes sense. Without it, the colonists would have problems with coordination, balance, orientation in space. They would also constantly feel seasick. Blah! Plus, their bones will lose minerals and get 1% less dense each month. The next moment, the reason why you woke up deep underground dawns on you. The people living on this asteroid must have hollowed it out. Now, they're living inside. They also have made it rotate. The force that's created when a body rotates around its axis, called the centrifugal force, simulates Earth's gravity. Your suit provides necessary protection against cold and radiation. The temperature on the surface of an asteroid can be from minus 100 to minus 150 degrees. Without some heat source, you wouldn't survive for long. 
When you're on Earth, the planet's strong magnetic field and atmosphere protect you from solar flares and cosmic radiation. But asteroids don't have such a defense mechanism. It must be another reason why colonists live under the surface. Burrowing at least 300 feet deep inside the asteroid is enough to shield the colonists from radiation. Just then, a question pops up in your mind. What are you doing here? As if on cue, you notice a human-shaped figure appear nearby. From the way they gesture, you figure out they must be furious. Suddenly, your helmet radio switches on. Through the background noise, you hear, What are you doing there? We don't have time to waste. Get down to work now. Work? What kind of work can it be? Oh, the colony must house asteroid miners. Astronomers think asteroids might be the material left after the solar system was formed. Or they might be planetary debris. Planets often fall into pieces after getting in space accidents. For example, collisions with other celestial bodies. Even without visiting asteroids, scientists know what they're made of. They use a special technique. It helps to figure out what minerals or metals an asteroid consists of by analyzing the light reflected off its surface. Some asteroids might contain not only iron, magnesium, and nickel, but also oxygen, water, gold, and platinum. The asteroid you're standing on is likely to be one of those containing water. Without it, the colony wouldn't survive. Plus, the people working here likely break this water down into oxygen and hydrogen. That's how they produce fuel that makes all their machines and mechanisms work. And the oxygen is used for breathing. Let's say people mined all the asteroids in the asteroid belt between Jupiter and Mars. Then each person on Earth would get almost $100 billion. That's how much cool stuff these space bodies have. An asteroid with a diameter of less than a mile would weigh about 2 billion tons. This weight would include 30 million tons of nickel, more than 1 million tons of cobalt, and at least 7,500 tons of platinum. Such an amount of platinum alone would cost billions of dollars. And now, imagine how many asteroids like that travel across the solar system. Anyway, you can't procrastinate any longer. After all, you're here to do some mining. While you're shuffling in the direction where the angry man disappeared, you pay attention to the details. The machinery you spot looks to be solar-powered. There are lots of robots dashing around. You guess it allows the colonists to cut down on fuel, food, and other supplies. The mines on the asteroid are similar to those on Earth. The method colonists use to extract minerals is scraping them off the asteroid. Deep tunnels and shafts pierce the rock. By the way, those who created them had to be extremely cautious. Asteroids aren't giant boulders. They're rather loosely organized piles of rubble. If you aren't careful while drilling, these enormous heaps of gravel can just fall apart. They can also disintegrate when you spin them to generate gravity. That's why an asteroid must first be emptied out carefully. And then, the colonists have to make sure the spin doesn't cause too much stress to its structure. Speaking of artificial gravity, thanks to it, the miners don't have to worry about valuable ore floating off into space. Otherwise, a large canopy would have to be stretched over the mines and used to collect the precious stuff. After the asteroid's resources finish, the colony will be moved to the next asteroid. After a seemingly endless working day, you drag your exhausted body into your sleeping pod. The only question on your mind is, is it just a dream, or am I stuck on this asteroid for months to come?